Hey folks, oh, kicked the camera already. Uh, Steve Alcorn here with you once again. Make sure to uh, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, make sure you leave me a comment down below uh, and hit that bell notification so you know when I'm doing more stuff. This is one of the coolest items I've ever picked up. Uh, I've got it on a carousel right now so you can see it in its full beauty. This is a 1934 version, and you can tell because the last patent date was 1934. This goes way back into the 20s, this version of this camera. It is a Bell & Howell Filmo, Filmo, and I believe it's model 57. Bell & Howell Filmo, model 57, 16 millimeter uh, movie camera. Pretty sweet. It's got, uh, the only thing this thing is missing original to it is the plug. So uh, we can use an extension cord for now. Uh, I wouldn't suggest doing that too much. Uh, as you can see up here, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see, but it does take oil in these spots. Uh, there's an oil part there and an oil part there. I have oiled this all the way up. It does need a good cleaning yet. Um, over here it takes these springs to keep your tension. Uh, these actually fold in both the top and the bottom and then that's why you, leave, you you can leave the spring on and you see the spring loses its tension uh, then you put it back out and then make sure your springs in the groove here and that's what uh, turns your film this one moves back too uh, it has a forward and a reverse feature here right now it's on reverse I'm not real familiar with the reverse feature yet I haven't been able to get it to work correctly so when the film gets on the take-up reel which goes down here I can't figure out how to go back around with it but that's okay um, this it has a, a light in this section here it gets really really hot when you uh, turn it on uh, but that's what most film projectors did back in those days I'm gonna move the camera a little bit just so I don't bump it too often and I'll make sure that you guys are still seeing what I'm seeing okay there we go so this thing is pretty significant. It's it's really nice. It has some features that I didn't expect it to have. Um, you can change the pitch and direction of the camera just by doing that. And it also is on a spring in there so that you can uh, turn that out faster if you need to. Um, it has a variable speed and I believe that's this one. Uh, this one, I believe, turns your lens in and out. I don't remember. We'll have to check that when we do it. This is a button here is for loading your film, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, not exactly sure what these do yet. Uh, this is so you can see inside to see if your bulb is good. Uh, this also is, I think you change your bulb down here with this one. Uh, and it has an on and off here that turns your light on and off. Uh, the cord that would originally came with it had the on and off switch, so for my purposes I'll have to uh, unplug until I can find an appropriate cord for this thing. But it's really cool, and I paid $12.50 for this at an auction. I had one guy bidding against me, but he wasn't really all that interested in it, uh, so I ended up with it. Uh, resale values all over the place on it. In this condition, working, uh, and it does work. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Uh, I think I could get up to 150 for it, uh, but I'm not going to sell it anytime soon because I have some old films to watch. Uh, these are 16 millimeter, which is harder to find. Uh, the quality of a 16 millimeter is better than a 50, uh, 8 millimeter, but the cameras were probably more expensive back in the day. Uh, this film here is. This is the can it came in. This says tin can. <laughs> uh, looks like Pago Pago, Samoa. It also has San Francisco, uh, something about the Coast Guard, and Honolulu. And it's from August of 1957. Now this camera doesn't produce sound. Uh, it was made in the silent film era days. Uh, but I don't think there's any sound on these uh, films anyway so it wouldn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, if I did find uh, films that did have sound on them, then I would probably try to find a different projector. But this particular one, uh, Bell & Howe, uh, even though uh, by 1940, 
I think, or 40 something. Uh, silent films were all but out in the, uh, Hollywood and they were making production cameras for consumer use that did have sound on them uh, and proje projectors and cameras uh, but Bill and Howe kind of held out until the mid 40s or so uh, but uh, this is one of their earlier models from 1934 it's even got the, mo uh, the uh, serial number right there 188923 and it's this film on model 57 Bell and Howe on it up there uh, and here's all your patent information and stuff like that. So, with all that said, we're going to go ahead and see if we can figure out how to load the film. Take-up reel goes down on the bottom. This is my take-up reel. It was just an empty reel that came in with all these 16mm uh, films I bought. So we'll put that on there. Uh, and your uh, actual film goes up here. So, we got to get that off. Okay. So to actually load the film in this, you take this lever here and move that out. You know, if you've seen, that pops the lens forward and backward. So that makes the, because you got to put the film back in here. These, ah, get out of my way. These move up and down a little bit when you do that. If you have them here, they don't move. But when you pull that out all the way, it gives you space here to move these up and down. Uh, the top one goes down, the bottom one goes up. The film loads in. We're going to pull some of that back in so we don't have so much. Like this. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of reaching here because I don't want to mess up with the camera here. So let me see if I can get in a little bit closer. Make it a little bit easier. Pull that film. This uh, film uh, reel is full. Normally you won't find them this full, but it, when I looked at the last film, uh, it looked like they had spliced several together. So we're going to pull this closer to the camera. See if you guys can get it. I want to make sure you still get a view of this section here, which you can, because uh, this is where all the work is done. So the film goes in and around this little spot right here. And because there's so much film on this thing, it just doesn't want to stay put. So we're going to go ahead and put the film in that hole, in that little slot there. If we can, there we go without messing that up again. Keeps wanting to come off on me. I am an amateur. What I do is not always the correct way of doing things, so don't take this as a how-to video. Just take it as this is how you or I would load this film, and now I got it all twisted. Okay. Get it all back out of there and start again. So you can only put this reel on one way. It has a little square side on that side and a round side, so the square side goes facing the camera. And you turn it until you get it in the right spot. So we're gonna try this again. I'm trying to be very conscious of what you guys are seeing as well, so. Right. Okay. I think I have to do something over here so that this doesn't spring back on me yet. If you can see there's a spring and it springs back on me so I'm going to see back over here if there's like a release for that. There we go. Okay so that was the release so now it's free to move. Okay so again take a little bit of film off the roll. You don't need a ton but we need enough to get into this little slot here and it's very difficult to keep that film right on the reel. It wants to keep popping off on me. Okay, so we got it in there. I'm going to push this back up. Now once we get this first one done, it'll be easier. Okay, so the trick to this is kind of move it back and forth in here. We tried to do this without you guys missing it. And when you move it back and forth in there, you'll be able to see, feel, and see this will move a little bit. Uh, you'll know that you got the teeth in. So then you can push that one back up when you get that one correct. And now that'll be locked in there. You want to leave any film projector like this, you want to leave a little loop up here like this. And that just prevents uh, all the catching and breaking of film. So down here on the bottom you do the same thing. You kind of leave a little loop. You go into that slot right there. 
Okay, we don't want it to touch here, but that's probably pretty good. And the same thing, you kind of move it back and forth to make sure it hits the teeth, and then you push that down. Come back around over here, push that button back down, and that locks everything into place. Uh, the next step would be is this slot right here. Now you can see I got way too much film, so uh, we didn't need quite as much as I used, but that's okay because we can just do this. We're bringing it over here. Let me make sure you guys can still see this. Yeah, so we're bringing it and we're going to put it in this slot right here, just like such. And then we'll go ahead and turn it until that gives a little bit of tension. And there you go. That's how you load that film projector. Now we got to power it on. I just happened to have a very wrong, don't do it my way, do it the right way, but I have a very wrong kind of cord to put on this thing, which is just a household extension cord. Uh, it's the only one I could find that would actually fit the uh, things. And you'll see it'll start right up once I get some power to it. And you can hear it, it's very loud. Uh, it's not doing anything now. I do have to push this back, I believe. If I turn it on, that turns the light on. This cord isn't great. It wants to pop off all the time, but that's because it's not the right one. Uh, we have it in forward. This is what makes the film move, I believe. Yep. And right now it's wrong, so we gotta turn it off. So what happened here, and we'll unplug it. What happened here was I didn't have that in the gears right, and that's why you gotta make sure that the gears are right. So if you don't, things like that happen. And we don't want that to happen because that'll burn up our film and mess it up and Gotta make sure we get it in there where it still has a loop up at the top and a loop down at the bottom. Loop that up a little. We may have to undo the whole thing here. I don't think so. We should be able to slide it right in there. I am an amateur at this, so I am out. Okay. Also, when you have your proper amount of looping here, it makes it easier to get it in this little hole in these slots. There we go. It's going in. How did they do this back in the 30s, huh? You can see, I don't, you probably can't see it on the camera, but there are little teeth in there. And I just didn't properly make sure that that was in there the last time. And that's why it came off the rail like that, and it's still not in there properly. So I gotta move it until I can get it on some teeth. It may just not be pushed in far enough. Let me take up some of that slack. I think we got it this time. Yeah, okay, this time we got it. I'll go ahead and push that back down. I'll plug it in. I'm gonna move it back so you guys can see better. Uh, push this back in and we'll run it s slowly so that we can see uh, that it's correct. Alright, now it's correct. We don't have enough slack up at the top, but it's still working. So I'm going to turn the film off for a second. And I'll show you how to turn the light on. The light just turns on right there. As you can see on the wall, there's some light. Don't leave it on when it's uh, not running because it will burn a hole in that film. So that's it. That's how you load it. Um, make sure you leave a little more slack. You can see I don't have much up there. This is probably better. Uh, this is probably too much and that's probably not enough. I can probably... Let me undo that for a second probably undo that a little and uh, let me see if I can get a little more slack in there before we go any further because I don't want to there we go I don't want to 
ruin the film uh, because I don't really know what's on these films. Uh, it could be just about anything. So uh, I'm going to reset the camera and I'm going to try to film over there on the other wall. So I'll be right back. All right, folks, you can hear the uh, camera going. It's very loud. I'm going to turn the lights off. We're going to give you a little film. This is what's actually on this camera, on this film. So we're, going to, we're only going to do a few minutes of it. So I'm going to go ahead and start the camera. And turn the light on. Um, I'm not sure where this is. But you can see it's in color. I don't know how good it's coming across on the uh, GoPro here. But uh, they're on a boat. This might be the Honolulu or San Francisco uh, part of the film. I would guess. But I have no idea. That's a pretty cool little deal going on here. Um, it's not very big because I'm not far enough away, but uh, I think it's really cool. You can change the speed of the camera by that variable speed I showed you, and I'll show you that here now. You slow it way down. You can slow it almost to a stop if you want to. Sorry for those of you who are epileptic. There are other adjustments you can make uh, to the film, but for the purposes of this video, I think that's good enough. So I'm going to turn the lights back on. I don't know if you can still see that. Can you still see that? Probably. But anyway, folks, that is the camera. That's it working. And you can see the light there. It's just a little spot on my wall there, a white spot on my wall. And I'll give you a good view of the camera working. That's where the light is in the top. There's actually a voltmeter on the top. And that's all of it. So we're going to turn it off now. This uh, button here stops your film. This button here stops your light. And if there was a switch on the cord, it would stop that too. I'm going to pull the cord out and I'm set you down. So, what do you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? Um, I've got to go through all these films and then find out what's really on them and list them on eBay. I don't know what European travel films from the 1950s are worth. Uh, I guess it just depends on what it shows. So, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that uh, bell notification if you want further updates, and leave me a comment down below. Have a good day.